Hello, everybody. Welcome into Ooh. First Take from LA for the ESPYs. Look who is here. They are back. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith. I'm Molly Karam. And let me just say, guys, my morning routine has not changed one bit, except instead of watching you debate from my couch, I get to see it up close and personal. So I'm very fired up. And I know I'm not the only person who is so excited. Welcome to have you aboard. Back. Welcome aboard. Thank yes. You. Welcome, Molly, and I have some crucial advice for you. Okay, I'm listening. All ears. You've got to watch this guy. Him? Yeah. I heard I got to watch both of you. Oh. My, my, my advice to you, I, I'll add to that. You are the moderator. You're in control. Okay. Limit that man's mouth. <laughs> I like control. Limit that man's mouth. I think I got to watch both of y'all. I'm going to have my hands full here, but we've got a lot to discuss today. Please never take three weeks off again. Yeah. I don't know what to do with the money. I, I, he might not have liked it. It didn't bother me. <laughs> I'm just saying. We have two special guests coming up, friends of the program, Ken Jong. Of course, uh, we all know him as Leslie Chow from The Hangover. And we also have friend of the program, Jerry Ferrara from The Entourage movie. They're stopping by. But first, after verbally agreeing to a four-year max deal with the Mavericks, DeAndre Jordan had a change of heart and re-signed with the Clippers. The contract with LA is a four-year max deal that'll be worth $88 million. On Friday, DeAndre apologized to Mark Cuban for how he handled the situation via Twitter. I want to publicly apologize to one of the best owners in the world, Mark Cuban, the Mavs, and their fans. I'm humbled by the Mavs and Mark Cuban's kindness and understanding. I'm sorry to have a change of heart. However, Mark Cuban wasn't buying it and saying on Cyberdust, when is an apology not an apology when you didn't write it yourself next? Stephen A. Smith, what is your take on the DeAndre Jordan situation? Well, first of all, let me say for the record, I have no problem with the fact that he elected to stay with the Los Angeles Clippers. I was on the record at the time, Skip Bayless, uh, when we were off the air on first take. Obviously, I had to be on Sports Center, and I was of the mindset that it was absolutely stupid for him to think about being uh, leaving the Clippers to begin with because DeAndre Jordan averaged about 10 shots a game. When you look at it from that perspective and think about the fact that five of those shots, actually about 10 points a game, rather, mm -hmm. yeah. and you think about about five of those shots, come on, dunks. Uh, Chris Paul, one of the best point guards in the world, is who you're leaving to play with either J.J. Barea, Jameer Nelson, who I love, young guy, but he's no Chris Paul, mm -hmm. uh, but him or Devin Harris, give me a break here. You can't go with that. So uh, it was just, to me, asinine for DeAndre Jordan to even be thinking about leaving the Clippers to begin with. So the fact that he did an about face and elected to stay with the team, I thought was perfectly within his right to do so. Mm -hmm. I thought he did the right thing. Um, but I do regret and lament how he handled it. Uh, DeAndre Jordan is 26 years of age. In the United States of America and the world, I believe you're recognized as a grown man. Um, and the fact of the matter is he came across as a little boy. And the reason he came across as a little boy is not because he changed his mind. It's not because he elected to stay with the Los Angeles Clippers. It's because you pick up the phone and you call Mark Cuban. You show him the courtesy and the decency. You made a commitment to take his four years, $80 million. You had the Dallas Mavericks bloviate about that. They were making plans in Big D about his arrival and what have you. If you've changed your mind, as far as I'm concerned, that's the first call that should have been made. You should have picked up the phone and you should have said, look, I'm sorry, I'm here at my house. I'm here with Doc Rivers. I'm here with Chris Paul. I'm here with Blake Griffin. I'm here with Paul Pierce. I'm here with billionaire owner Steve Ballmer. And the bottom line is I decided that it's best for me to stay here. I apologize, but I have changed my mind and I am staying in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The fact that he didn't do that is very, very bad. But what elevates the level of embarrassment exponentially, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that Mark Cuban revealed that I did not hear from him. I heard from his mama. Mm -hmm. So not only did you not call, but somehow, some way, your mama picked <laughs> up the phone and called Mark Cuban. You are a 26-year-old man. Why is your mama calling and not you? That is just incredibly embarrassing. It looks incredibly weak. And from this point forward, unfortunately, when you look at a situation like this, I think that DeAndre Jordan is a good person. I think that he's a big time center. If he could hit his free throws, I think he got the potential to be one of the best big men in the game. But there is a point in time where you clearly have handled something like a little boy mm -hmm. where people should be looking at you and looking for diapers. And this mm -hmm. is one of those situations. It's very embarrassing to have your mama speak up before you. Mm -hmm. It just is.
First, let me say, as I listen to you speak and speak and speak, yes. I, I, I must admit, I have to admit this publicly. You missed me. I missed you. <laughs> I, I missed you. I, I, I just love listening to you. I missed you, you too, blowfield. bro. I missed you Thank too, bro. You. Now, I'm going to take it a level deeper, and I hear everything you just said. But I cannot blame or certainly condemn DeAndre Jordan for the way he handled things because it was predictable to me. And I think he showed you, and you said you like him as a person, but I think he showed you, he showed all of us who he is and who he is not. I am here to tell you that this is just me. When it comes to his basketball character, his mental toughness, this is why I would not want this man on my team or in my NBA foxhole, because he reacted predictably to me, because he panicked when he realized he was going to be the man making the max in Dallas, Texas. He was going to be the face of a franchise, when in fact, as you know full well, he's most comfortable and most suited for being the third wheel for the Los Angeles Clippers. So when it struck him, oh my God, I might crumble under this pressure in Dallas, he folded and fled immediately back to a Chris Paul and a Doc who for the first time I believe in all their tenure together showed him a little love and respect. Wouldn't you agree with that? Um, I don't think it was the first time, but I hear you. Well, well I, he, he belly ached about, oh, Chris is always on me and he's always pointing fingers at me when he deserved to have fingers pointed he at him. He deserved to have you know fingers what? pointed at him. And by the way, DeAndre Jordan is known to have an attitude mm -hmm. on occasion yeah. inside the Clippers locker yeah. room where he gets in other guys' faces as well. So let's not act like Chris Paul is the bad guy no. and he was the innocent boss. No. And I agree with you. DeAndre made the right basketball decision because Dallas was going to be a middling team with DeAndre, and the Clippers are back to being a Western Conference contender with DeAndre. So he did the right thing to go back to Chris Paul because we know DeAndre's got big talent. He can defend, he can rebound, and he can definitely lob dunk, especially when he's fed by Chris Paul. He's a Skywalker. He's a Skywalker. But... Can he make big, crucial fourth-quarter free throws? Has he figured out how to do that yet? No, he is not. Well, he could barely make crucial first-quarter right. free that, throws. Well, that's what I say. That's who this guy is not. But the Clippers are comfortable with who he isn't because they've been playing and winning with who he is not. So to me, bottom line, the joke is on the Dallas Mavericks here because they bet on the wrong guy. They should have seen this coming. And let me make a quick point. We're about to speak about my San Antonio mm -hmm. Spurs. The Spurs could have been in on this derby, too. They could have said, hey, if we don't get LaMarcus, we want DeAndre. Uh, they were very quiet about DeAndre because he's not their cup of NBA tea. They don't want him on their franchise. Well, I, I, told, I, I respectfully disagree with that. I think that DeAndre Jordan would be an incredible asset to the San Antonio Spurs, especially playing alongside Tim Duncan because Tim Duncan could play the four or the five. Not their the, kind of guy. I'm just saying the versatility mm -hmm. with his greatness, DeAndre Jordan could only get better from that. I think the other thing about it, if you want to sit there and, and, and malign DeAndre Jordan from that perspective as it pertains to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, we'll get into that later, but I will tell you that Greg Popovich's mentality and how he approaches things and how he refuses to kiss anybody's tush, for lack of a better mm -hmm. phrase, mm -hmm. the bottom line is, is that that ain't going to work because DeAndre Jordan clearly needed to be pacified. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. But I'm not going to condemn the Dallas Mavericks for betting on the wrong guy. First of all, he wasn't the wrong guy. DeAndre Jordan is a big-time talent. There is no question in my mind that if this brother hits free throws, he is obviously one of the top two big men in the game of basketball if he can hit his free throws. When you talk about what they need, if you've got a DeAndre Jordan with the Dirk Nowitzki of the world and the Chandler Parsons, then you would have been formidable. Would you have won a title? No. You still would need to do more. But at the same time, it was going to be a significant upgrade. And I've said this to you repeatedly. Mm -hmm. You can't teach seven feet. And the reason why, even though he was, even though Akeem the Dream Olajuwon wasn't seven feet, I will remind everybody back in 84 when Michael Jordan was drafted third overall, the Portland Trailblazers were continuously crucified for grabbing Sam Bowie at number two. 
Nobody knocked the Houston Rockets for taking Akeem the Dream Olajuwon at number one, even though he never won a title until Jordan went into retirement and then hosted ultimately. Well, they did right then, but they might now. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying to you is that when you are 6'11", 7 feet tall, and you've got a requisite set of skills, sure. you can't teach the size that comes with that. Mm -hmm. So nobody's going to knock the Dallas Mavericks. This is all on DeAndre Jordan. Mm -hmm. You gave your word, and your word has to mean something. And the fact that he went against that, and it's a subject that I felt I feel the need to touch on and bring it up right now. Skip Bayless, I want you to keep this in mind. Back in 2010, and LeBron James would seem to have nothing to do with this, but he's relevant here. Back in 2010, when LeBron decided to go to South Beach, nobody lamented his decision to go to South Beach outside of Cleveland. It was perfectly within his right. What you lamented was how he handled sure. it. Mm -hmm. What was the rippling effect of that? There was a collective bargaining negotiation that took place the following summer. The owners were dogmatic and hardcore, and they really went after the players. And some people felt that to some degree, the level of vitriol contributed to the players was to do in large part with how LeBron James handled that stuff. Then that following December, because the negotiations were in the summer of 2011, then that, and, you know, the guys were locked out, you know, only 66 games were played that season. Then in the aftermath of all of that, what happened, Skip? There was a Chris Paul trade, three-team deal involving the New Orleans Hornets at the time, okay, the Rockets, all right, you know, and, 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 and the Lakers. The Lakers. And... Chris Paul was supposed to go to the Lakers. And David Stern, de facto owner of the NBA, owned the team at the time, the Hornets, because they were devoid of ownership. What happened? He nixed the deal. What, in large part, contributed to that? Dan Gilbert raising holy hell about how the Lakers were going to save $20 million in salary, $21 million in luxury tax dollars, and they're still getting the best player. Well, does Dan Gilbert send that letter if LeBron James sits there and picks up the phone and calls him and say, I'm sorry, I appreciate everything, but I'm willing to go. I I'm, okay, I'm looking was, to go. That was just bad blood. Yeah, but I'm saying because of how it's yeah. handled. So now you have this situation with DeAndre refusing to Go, refu you know, reneging. But, but very so, different than LeBron. It's very because different. Because LeBron despised Dan Gilbert. No, 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 so but, no, the bridge I'm, had been burned. No, what I'm saying to you is that this free agent moratorium and other yeah. things that come into play, it's something that you're going to hear about and it's something that's going to be revisited. And a lot of times players are in the throes of a negotiation and what have you, rightfully so thinking about themselves, but devoid of the extent, you know, the extended impact that it could eventually have you're, on you're other not players. It should be shortened, though. No, I'm I'm just telling you that owners are going to look at something like this, see how DeAndre handled it. Who's to say an owner? Molly, Skip, mm -hmm. doesn't turn around in the future and say, you know what? What I committed to you about a week ago verbally, now I could change my no, mind. But there's an unwritten uh, rule that your word is your bond during right, this period. That's and what there's I'm saying. never been a glaring example like this one. Right. With DeAndre, but my point is, were you shocked that he didn't call back Mark Cuban or Chandler Parsons I was. who had recruited him? I was. I was not. I was. That's who the guy is and is not. I'm sorry. That's who he is. And they shouldn't have been surprised because just watch him play. Listen to Chris Paul. Listen to Doc before. He's a third wheel, and he panicked, and he was ashamed of his decision, and he ran back to the Clippers. And I can't blame him. God bless him. Onward and upward. I got you. As we move on, this is the thing that I don't understand, though. If you don't want to call and deal with it, why are you going to have your mother call? Why don't you have your agent call? Hide behind your representative. Well, in fairness to DeAndre, we don't know if he had his mother call. Sometimes mama have, mamas have the type of relationship where they, they, they take it upon themselves to do something, yeah. and they just do it. So I don't want to sit there and say that DeAndre did that, but it still looks it. very, it's very just... bad when but your you mama an calls agent who instead of you. No, who can he, he should have called, but he doesn't he have the guts to call. That's what it was. All Bottom right. line. All right. Well,